Okay, so today is October the 8th. This is the Package Manager's Weekly Sync Up. And I'm Dirk, and let's get started. All right, uh, so Dan, do you have any updates on uh, IPNS? Uh, a little bit. Um, things are are mostly solid and going to be paused for a while while I move on to other things. Um, there's some PubSub stuff getting finished, which is just mostly going to end up being like just a couple of rounds of like just back and of, of back and forth. Uh, the remaining non trivial thing, I guess is uh, efficiently caching peers that we've tried to discover already. Um, Basically, if you build a cache and the cache returns multiple peers, and then this thing is going to be accessed from multiple different um, threads, then there needs to be some sort of state in there that says, like, I have already tried this, and maybe some sort of back off of like when to try again. Um, Steven was concerned about what happens when. Like, how frequently do we try connecting to peers that we've already tried and failed to connect to before? If we keep discovering them and we keep tried and failing them, like, what are we going to do about that? Um, I'll probably just do something simple. And if we want to use, like, an ex another layer of exponential back off things, we can probably do that as well. Yeah, I've definitely implemented this before. It's probably something that should be in the P2P, right? Yeah, well, so I already, I made a, in the discovery thing, I, I tried to make some like generic exponential back off things, um, which maybe I can use, um, or just generic back offs, including linear back off. But uh, we'll see. Okay, that's cool. Um, anything else on IPNS? Not IPNS. There's been, I guess, I, I did a little bit of work, although it's probably gonna not get finished for a while on extracting names on like refactoring the namesys interfaces uh i don't know it was it's been a like a pretty good start but it's going to need a bunch of time and i don't think this quarter is necessarily going to have that so what are you working on this quarter do you know yeah so this quarter is between now and whenever the testing infrastructure is good enough for me to start hammering on DHT things. Uh, it's gonna be some amount of like miscellaneous stuff plus IPFS ad performance. Um, so that includes like, there's some pinning bugs that I'm, I'm fixing now. There's, uh, uh, there's the config file stuff which needs to get fixed uh, so that we can actually, you know, have the defaults normally like have actually controllable defaults um and be able to set things to true by default would be nice um and i don't know i'm helping david figure out how to spin up the ipfs instances for for testing things so you can get into that a little bit so there's a bunch of like miscellaneous stuff and then start looking at, at ad performance more Okay, cool. So the most the most kind of package managery thing, I guess, is the, the ad performance. Yeah. Okay. I think we have a section a little further down on that. We'll ask you about it in a minute. Um. So, any questions for Adin about IPNS? Okay. So the next section is uh, bit swap updates. So, um, yesterday I kind of finished off. Uh, like a pretty decent version of the bit swap work I've been doing. And um, our collaboration partner ran it and found that it was it was basically a lot better than what's out there in master. So uh, so that this week I think I'm gonna concentrate on like really making it bulletproof, fixing up all the tests and everything. Um, yeah, I think that's that'll probably take me most of the week. And then I'm not sure exactly what the next steps are going to be there. So I'm going to find that out as well. Anyone have any questions about that? Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess, I mean, we don't have to do this now, but wondering your thoughts on, I, as I mentioned yesterday, the, I suspect that when the P2P is ready to put more time into pub sub, they're going to have to think about like, hey, this randomly running into peers isn't working. We need to form trees. And they're going to want to use the same metrics. And in any event, the entire system is just like, send a message, get a message. So I'm wondering if there's a way to like, or if it even makes sense, I guess, to like suck some of the components out of BitSwap and like give them to the P2P to deal with. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, there's a lot of information in IPFS that's in kind of like different subsystems and it's like a waste because then we, we ask for the same stuff multiple times in different places. So I think that's probably something that needs to be very carefully thought out. Um, so it sounds like the P2P is not not quite at the place where they're going to be implementing this. Is that right? I'm not clear. I mean, so there's some stuff that's like already there. For instance, the have like, you know, I have, I want is already like part of PubSub. Like they, they already went and like, in a sense, like re-implemented that. Um, I don't know when they're going to get around to doing the tree broadcasting. I imagine it will be as soon as somebody starts trying to use this in production and realizes that randomly running into peers is not what they wanted. <laughs> um, so quick question, is the I have I want, is that a Bloxy ID? No, but that is an excellent question as well because it's the, the identifier for a message is um, a peer ID and a number. Um, the things are not ordered. They're just like, this is the number. We hope they're incrementing. I see. But there was someone, Steven and some other folks have been interested in like having PubSub, but using like CID, like having a sort of reliable, in a sense, PubSub where I just have like a chain of, I have a CID that's just like a growing list of all of the prior messages that I cared about. Or maybe they don't have to care. Maybe I maybe I decide it's not reliable and I just send new CIDs for each message, right? Um, okay, it would be no. interesting. And one of the someone tried to implement this in Rustlib P2P. I don't think that PR got merged, but they wanted to do that as an option. And I think that it's probably worth doing that. Okay, that's probably I mean that sounds like kind of a longer conversation, but I was just curious if it's if the existing messages are like exactly analogous to, uh, to BitSwap? So the thing is they, they could be, um, they're just strings. So I, I had a PR earlier this year that basically instead of using, that just used an IPNS key as the, as the message identifier I see. or basically. Okay. Um, so it, it is doable if, if we wanted to. Okay, so I guess uh, the takeaway there is we should probably um, sort of think how we can uh, uh, we can save ourselves from doing extra work by like sharing information across different bits of the architecture. Yeah, I mean the BitSwap case is obviously like um, different in that you only have one layer to traverse. Like I'm only directly talking to my peers. Yeah. They might happen to also find out about data from someone else but there's no like, the requests aren't being propagated. They're just, it's just one layer. Right, right. Um, okay. Um, I think that we should, uh, maybe, okay, let's keep that in the notes and let's maybe coordinate with Steven when he gets back and uh, talk through what we should do there. Um, okay, so, uh, Alex, do you have some any updates about Unix FS v1.5? Uh, not really. I'm waiting for Stavodian to come up with his proposed solution to having uh, the metadata in the directory rather than on the file. And obviously he's out. So. Is that something someone else can propose and you can kind of just look at and approve or disapprove? Um, well, it's a good question. I was just reading back on the issue and the last kind of note as to the design direction was that there was a sync discussion 
in which it was decided to do it the other way. Um, which I was just, you know, just pinged the thing on there and just said, has this been documented anywhere? Because otherwise, no, it's all in Stephen's head. Okay, so it sounds like he needs to be uh, to be part of that conversation. Any questions for Alex? We're we're planning on putting in the time and stuff, right? That's is that that's part of the, that's part of this whole thing. Is like, if I understand, there's like two bits to this. One is one is an execute bit, and the other is like m time. So I believe what we discussed was the what what seems likely to happen is that we will be storing the entire mode and then um, some form of time, likely the m time. I know there was some talk about c time being, you know, tricky with this um, or maybe useless or something. So I'm not really sure what's going in besides the full mode, but most likely a mode and a time at the very least. And this is mostly just to enable our sync, right? More or less, yeah. It's also what the, um, the geeks guys were asking for. It's basically the executable bit. Like I think the, the rest of it seems to be a nice to have, um, unless it's you know then required for our sync. But but certainly um, geeks were just after the executable bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like those are like very different. Those are very different things. The execute bit is like is like yeah, right. Some some places need it. Some places like some systems need it. Some are like Windows and are like, do you end in exe? If so, execute bit. Um, the other is the, cough, the M cough. time thing is a whole different. Cough, cough, Unix FS, cough, cough. Yeah. Yeah, the, the M time thing is like a whole different story, but if we just want to do it for now to enable our sync, like whatever. In in theory, the, the mode bits should, I guess, um, provide a lot for archival stuff of like anything there, since you can just say, here's the permissions, here's the type, here's the, whether it's executable or not. Um, so it covers like the executable case, but it should, should be a little bit more useful. It's a little vague, to be honest. Um, I know Andrew was supposed to be talking with Steven about it, and, and they likely did, but nothing has come of that yet. So I guess we'll see in spec. Okay, um, so I'm going to queue. Have any updates on uh, Mount? I do. So um, yesterday I spent some time basically going over some of the feedback that I've gotten on it, um, particularly in, in relation to like how memory is allocated and how references are derived and stuff like that. Um, and then I generalized a lot of the traversal logic. So. Um, everything basically just implements this interface and it's good to go. Um, messing with that seems quite a bit better. Um, however, I'm getting some weird issues around returning or operating on the wrong reference. Um, so something's opened and then write is called on it and it thinks that it's not open because something's not assigned properly. Um, so I'm looking into that, but outside of Outside of some of the right bugs, um, seems to be going well. So that's where I'm at on that. Great. Any questions for the Dominic? Cool. OK, uh, I didn't. So you mentioned before you are probably going to start taking a look at ad performance now. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done like I I had an initial conversation with Stephen before he before he went out of town, um, of trying to think of like a few things avenues to go look at, uh, you know maybe like one one of these is you know about 
we we paralyze writes, but we sort of synchronously flush everything to disks. So that sort of is going to end up like choking it, or you know, a few other like miscellaneous things like that. Um, I sort of just need to get my like set up for testing. Like I need to you know set up some scripts that are going to like actually let me go test this and see how it goes. Um, and and then we'll we'll see what helps. I you know I even just set up the initial benchmarking things. I know you had some of that, and there's some issues there. Is there any like any either code or advice you have for how to look at this? So I created a PR. I don't know if you've had a look at that, um, which is extremely rough. It's just like you know me throwing together ideas, but inside that PR. Um, it like it'll actually set up like a a data structure of you know it'll you can set up different ones in different sizes so you can test out kind of different scenarios for add uh, so that may or may not be useful I mean you might just want to use um, I think it's DD whatever the name of the the tool is that sort of like generates a blob of random data it might end up, end up being easier than using my hack together thing. Um, but yeah, any questions you have? Uh, I'm happy to you know walk through it or whatever if you want to take the time. Do you have a, a rough idea of like how it all works to begin with, like the adding? Uh, not at like the code architecture level. At, like you know, concept level is not so hard. Code architecture level, there's a lot more there. I haven't really looked at yet. Yeah, it took me probably like a week or two to actually figure it out. Like, it's very, very complicated. And it's going down three different layers. You know, there's like uh, Unix FS layer and there's the DAG layer, and the block layer. So it's pretty complex. Yeah, I have some of the links to like, yeah, like the the buffer, like, yeah, the buffer DAG and IPLD caching and the block store and mm -hmm. areas that I'm like, okay, I need to go like press like, you know, F11 a whole bunch of times and figure out where this is going exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, the first thing I did as part of that PR was kind of try to explain in a general way what it's doing. Um, so that's like right over the top, but it may take some plumbing to, to kind of understand in particular what it's doing. Is that PR a link to from your issue with like the graphs and stuff? Uh, it should be. Actually, the issue is where I explained it, I think. And then there should be a reference somewhere to the branch. I think I might have just put it as a link under one of the graphs, like code here. Uh, spreadsheet slash code. Is that oh, yeah. spreadsheet slash code? That's how I roll. <laughs> okay. Name. So is that a PR or is that just a uh, in your probably branch? just a branch actually? Yeah, the problem is uh, with the with the hard links is like they give you the file, but I can't find out if there's a newer one on that branch because I don't know what branch it came from. Okay, let me uh, let me find it. I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll find that in that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, just like yeah. Slack it to me or something. Yeah. Um, any questions for Adina about add stuff? So I guess maybe a question for you, Dirk, is like, so when I talked with Steven about this, I was a little skeptical of working on ad performance this quarter just because of how long it took you to get started. And then being like, so if I spend a month getting into this and then I then pivot to the DHT thing, like I've, we now have two people that are like, <laughs> know what's going on, but have not had time to fix it. Yeah, because point. it's the best use of time. I um, and Steven's guess was that there's probably like fixing it TM is like, or making it much more efficient is, could be a, a while, but that there might be like one or two of these things that might inv result in like a pretty dramatic speed up. Does that seem plausible or is that like very wishful thinking? Um, I think basically the conclusion we came to is we're going to need to mess around with the way it works. So I don't think it's 
going to happen fast, honestly. I think uh, at least if the last thing we were discussing in that issue was like changing fundamentally the way that it, it sort of orders stuff. So, you know, in order to t properly test that, I think it's probably going to take a while. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I think up and yeah, we'll, we'll see how this, how this all ends up going. Um, I'm trying to make sure at least I get some of like the miscellaneous housekeeping bugs that are blocking people from doing things out of the way. Yeah, I think that's a good strategy. That. That's, that's a smart approach. Yeah. Uh, IPFS data store performance, I guess that's Steven, is it? Anyone know about that? I guess not. Um, Okay, so then we just got uh, blockers asks questions in parking lot. Does anyone have any any of those? Um, Dominic and Alex, did either of you see Gozala's uh, Unix of SV2 thing, the link to the jump rope? I saw it, but I didn't get a chance to read it. Yeah, I. I I started listening to the talk. It was really distracting. <laughs> so it was what? Really distracting. I was trying to do some other stuff at the time. I haven't quite worked out how to do that, like listen to a talk and then code at the same time. It's just with with that talk, I don't think I mean maybe it's just me. I, I couldn't do it. I feel like you gotta look at some of the slides also and be like, oh okay, this is what they're doing. I don't think it's actually it's necessarily so dissimilar from what we want to do anyway. I think it's just a particular, like, maybe I misinterpreted it, but I think it's just a particular flavor on it, um, which is like, yeah, okay. Like, that's why I was trying to compare it to like the different chunkers. It's like, yeah, I mean, you can have the same data structure and then glue a bunch, if they have links, you can glue the links together in like arbitrary ways, right? Um, but that that kind of structure might be efficient. I don't know. It's I think they were, they were, it was interested in like more sequential things, right? How do you, I want to ask for a byte range, right? Which I think Unix of SV2 we want to do in general is like, because all of your file system commands operate on a byte range, right? So it'd be nice to be able to just access like a chunk of stuff by, by bytes. I feel like that's something we'll likely be exploring more as we get closer. Once once 1.5 lands, we can make considerations about two, right? Yeah, although I perhaps I, I got this wrong. I, right, the, the difficult thing, obviously, is every time you have like a new a new data format, um, the some percentage of the data will become inaccessible to a new version of the same, a new formatted version of the same file, which is like really annoying. And so that's why we don't want to like iterate on this quite as rapidly as maybe we do other stuff. But which is why I think 1.5 is like, yeah, okay. Like everyone knows this isn't going to last very long, but like, let's do it. But like, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to last, right? Yeah, it's definitely an, an issue. I remember like kind of tangentially related, um, someone was mentioning about schema changes between like different schema versions and things like that and migrating from uh, or having interop between newer versions of applications with newer versions of the schemas still talking to the older ones like that. Um, and while I don't know what much came of that conversation, I, I know that uh, Eric Meyer was excited to talk about that with this person. So hopefully things of that nature are, are being considered um, so that we don't end up in situations like that, I guess, where, where the data becomes useless or something like that um, in a new iteration. But it's definitely something I, I specifically want to look into is, is all the stuff that was posted there about 
these formats. Um, it would be nice to use one that we are not going to regret later, I guess. Or or think a little bit about like the the upgrade path, right? Like that's the the area we don't have upgrade paths for is that's one of the big areas we don't have upgrade paths for is you you've changed around the structure of the data, but it's underlying the same thing. Yeah, I imagine the um, the geeks people and all that are, are probably very focused on similar things too, of like when it comes to reproducibility, right? Like I want to just always construct the same exact object regardless of what I am capable of, I guess. If I have a new schema, I might still want to use the old one and all that. I mean, there's even like lower level things, right? Where I, I use literally the exact same everything except I switch from like CIDV zero to CIDV one. Maybe, maybe you're A times different than mine. Yeah, I mean, and I'm saying even at like not the even at even not really at the data layer. If you're like, I just want to change the hash function, or I want to change the version of the CID, like the whole all the metadata has changed. Now the file data is still the same, so like you get that's still maybe okay. And because the metadata is small, maybe there's a way to like advertise both metadata structures together. Um, so we just got a couple of minutes left. So I want to just ask a couple of quick things quickly before the end. Um, so one is last week, I think Stephen was asking about whether, uh, whether we feel like this, this meeting is like useful if we want to keep doing it every week. Does, does Aaron sort of have a strong opinion about that at the moment? I oh, didn't, you've got your mouth open. Speak. I'm not sure. I, I guess I'm just thinking like, if the, if the implementers meeting yesterday on Mondays was not always so tight on time, this might not be necessary because we're all sort of working on fairly different things. But given that that's not the case, having like having a meeting that's not super long once a week that has like a little bit of flex time with parking lot stuff in it i feel like not so bad yeah that makes sense um alex do you have an opinion not a strong opinion i mean a lot of the stuff that's discussed in this meeting i don't have a direct input on um but it is i mean i think it's useful to know what's going on yeah, I wonder if we can sort of keep it a bit more on track, maybe, um, so that it is relevant to all of us, and then kind of like move some of the more technical discussions to like other channels. Um, so, Dominic, do you have a? Oh, sorry, Alex, what were you going to say? Well, more self-flagellation, but it's more like I should just get involved with the Go code base as well. I mean, that's my info. I guess. I mean, the meeting really is supposed to be about package management, though. It's not really it's supposed to be just a go meeting. We are developers, though, and we're going to talk about development. <laughs> Dominic, do you have any thoughts? Uh, none in particular. I think, like, not a not a strong feeling one way or the other. It is a little strange the ordering. I I kind of wish that we had this before the core implementations mm -hmm. call, um, but that is what it is. Um, it does feel like there's a lot of overlap, at least in the notes, of like what we talk about and what, what we what we bring up. Um, but we do talk about it a lot more in depth here. So. Um, yeah, that's true. I yeah, I kind of agree with you and Adina that this is kind of a nice place to uh, to have a bit more space to talk about stuff. Um, but maybe we don't need to actually put in the weekly updates part, which no one did today. But I don't think it's really adding much. Okay, so I guess let's keep going with this meeting. Um, anything else anyone wants to bring up? We got about five minutes left. I just wanted to mention to uh, Alex that if you are interested in getting involved in the Go and the Go code base stuff, uh, it can be a little rough, um, and there's like, yeah, it can be a little rough. So like, recommend reaching out to a person because. Um, 
the examples like the libp2p examples have gotten better the ipfs examples are still not great because there's like designed for people who want to use like the daemon or use like the http api to talk to the daemon and you're like oh okay i could have just done this from javascript i have a daemon there i have a ipfs client there like a http client there too um so yeah if you want to start getting more into the weeds a we we need more examples but b ask ask a friend All right, I think that's it. Uh, so, oh, the one other thing, I don't think we're doing stand-ups anymore, right? Or at least we don't have any on the calendar. Okay, I guess we'll uh, we'll wait till Stephen slash Molly get back to talk about that. The thing on, the knowledge sharing thing on Thursday, I guess is just, is gonna be us again, right? Cause I think, okay. Does anyone have anything prepared for that? Yeah, I don't. Uh, do you guys? No, not it. I went. <laughs> I guess maybe we can skip it because I don't think anyone's got anything to share. I think, I don't know. We could potentially like just figure it out at the time and be like, hey, has anyone run into anything weird last couple of days? Probably won't be me because I'm out tomorrow, but... Yeah, maybe we can discuss uh, in Slack if, if people have want to get some feedback on some ideas or some stuff they're working on. Yeah. Yeah, that, that actually sounds pretty good is to have that a little unprepared. It'd be nice to just go in and say, I have a question about this JavaScript thing or this IPNS thing, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Okay, that sounds good. All right, I will talk to you guys on Thursday. Have a good Let's week. See everyone. Cool.